Welcome back to West Fork, friends. It's pretty chilly out here this morning, and I thought it'd be a good time to build a campfire. And I've been uh, having a lot of fun with my bow drill lately, and I thought I'd show you all how an old guy makes a bow drill fire. And uh, have my coffee and enjoy being in the outdoors once I get the fire going. Stay tuned. I'll show you how uh, what I got here and how I'm going to get it done. Okay, friends, this is my uh, bow drill kit. I have uh, sourced all this stuff yesterday. And uh, let me just go through each component of this for you real quick, because at this age, at my age, you have to work smarter, not harder. And I don't want to work up too much of a sweat. Okay, to start out with, I have my uh, fire border hearth block. This is from a dead standing aspen tree. I'm using aspen because it's found all over the United States and there's poplars all over the world. This is in the poplar family. So you have cottonwood, you have uh, different kinds of poplar on the east coast of the United States. This is quaking aspen, and all of them have really good uh, wood for bow drill. And uh, one test I do is uh, stick my thumb. I use, I use the rule of thumbs. You should be able to stick your thumbnail into the wood and it should leave a dent. If you push hard on there, you don't want it too crumbly, but this, you can make a, a nail print in the wood. And then I have a willow. Also, the other rule of thumb is, is the fireboard is about as thick as my thumb. And the other rule of thumb is my uh, spindle is about as thick as my thumb. This one was actually a little bit bigger. I could have cut it down farther. But on the uh, friction end of it, I've carved it down. So it's about the same as my thumb. And uh, anyway, this is willow. Willow is a great wood to use. I can put a thumbnail at, uh, mark in this too. So I can sink my thumbnail into that. So this is probably a little bit harder, but I've had good luck with willow. Willow is another species that you'll find all over the place. Clear up into the Arctic, and you can find it in the desert. Uh, so these are two species that are widely available. And then for a uh, bearing block, I use fatwood. We have a lot of fatwood here. This is a piece of ponderosa pine, and it's pretty dense. It's full of pitch. So as you use it, the pitch will melt and kind of lubricates the top. But uh, also, I pick some of these little dandelion weeds and I put that in the hole, push that in the hole. Dandelion weeds work good. In a pinch, you can spit in there. And uh, just anything you can do to lubricate this because you want friction at the top or at the bottom. You don't want any friction at the top. It just makes it hard to, uh, to work the, the bow drill. So the next component is a, uh, a bow. This is a piece of red osier dogwood. And uh, very important if you're an older guy or if you're out of shape like me to use a longer bow. You'll see a lot of YouTube videos where they have really short bows and they really got to go fast to get enough friction. So this is the key to the low and slow method. The old guy. <laughs> method of bow drill. You want a nice long bow. You can just get a nice easy stroke going and uh, smoke a cigarette, have a, no I'm just kidding, but you, it's, it takes a lot less energy to uh, work the long bow and you're just getting a lot more revolutions and it's a lot less work. And I have this attached up here, it's notched and I got a clove hitch at the top and a clove hitch at the bottom with a bunch of wraps. And uh, so the next, next component is you need a little strip of bark or a little piece of wood or a piece of leather to catch the ember. So I'll show you how that works. And then I have a tinder bundle. 
and uh, gathered some grass. It was cr I crumbled it up good. It was getting kind of crumbly, so I put it inside of a piece of birch bark to hold it together. I stuck some fat wood in there. I had some shavings left over, so I put those in there too. So that's our tinder bundle. And uh, anyway, let's let's put it together. I'll show you how I load my bow. Hold the big end up. Rotate it away from you. So it's like that and the the drill should be on the outside of the string. Another trick is if the string begins to slip while you're bowing, you can squeeze in on this a little bit. You can lift up a little bit with your fingers or push down a little bit to keep it tracking where you want it. I like to keep it kind of low. I don't like it climbing the spindle. Uh, but then also you can pull out on the bow, like at the last, at the very end, it'll start getting pretty tight, pretty tough to turn. And you need to increase your tension for power. You can pull out on the bow a little bit. And since this has a little bit of uh, give to it, it'll keep that tension pretty good. So anyway, without further ado, let's put this thing together and we'll go through the steps of uh, building a fire, uh, building a coal, low and slow like us old guys like it. Okay. I'm going to bring you in a little closer later. But for now, I've made a little divot in the top of a hearth board here. So we're going to get this burned in. And uh, I'm going to put a little bit of dandelion in the top here. Work it around a little bit with the top of the spindle. Yeah, that helps a lot. I, I'm surprised how lubricating that is. Okay, so I'm put my... We're not gonna build an ember yet. We're just gonna burn this thing in good. Hopefully, it's pretty cold out here this morning. Uh, I'm just gonna take my time. Just gonna take my time here. Take nice long strokes. And uh, you're warming up the set for one thing. It was 30 this morning, so the wood's pretty cold. Yeah, I'm trying to keep it level. My uh, spindle's about probably 10 inches long. I like it about 10 inches to a foot long. I'm resting my elbow on my knee here just to steady it. I can do it without the knee too, I don't know. I think it helps a little bit to steady it. And it just takes a while to warm it up, so I might cut the video short here, but I can already smell a little smoke. And it's important right now not to push too hard. You don't want to push too hard. You just want to put light pressure, or moderate pressure on there. And just warm it up. So yeah, it's going to take a little while. But as you'll notice, I'm not breathing hard. I haven't even broke a sweat. Try it a little bit more. Sometimes it helps to give a little bit of pressure just to get it started and then back off. All right, so bearing block smoking. Not good. So that happens, 
I'm going to give it a shot of dandelion greens. Okay, so I've whittled this down a little bit more so it won't heat up. It was a little too chubby. And uh, added some more dandelion to the bearing block at the top. And we'll give it another shot. Coffee's getting cold. I still haven't broken a sweat. All right, so you can hear it start to engage. Getting some smoke now. Getting some nice black dust. So we're getting things warmed up, which is great. So it's a good time to take a little break. And we're gonna take a look and see what we have so far here. And we're gonna cut a little notch in that fireboard look at there so we got uh, yeah the fireboard it's getting burned in real nice it's right where I want it um, the bearing block I like uh, I like that pow the socket to be deeper because then I can put more uh, weeds in there but on a brand new one it's kind of tough you can see this old socket here how deep that is it almost punched through. That's why I'm not using it anymore. It's because it's so thin. It's almost shot. So anyway, uh, but when they get deeper like this, you can put a lot of dandelion in there, or weeds or alder leaves or whatever you find. So next thing we're going to do here is uh, we're going to cut a notch. The easy way to do that is uh, find the center point, push straight down with your knife, and then start whittling a V on both sides. Just like that, just kind of work your way down and uh, you push again. And just, uh, we're gonna work our way through here till it's about a third of the way uh, to the center where the V the point of the V comes about a third of the way. I'll get it cut out and I'll show you the final result. Okay, I got the notch carved out and uh, got it about a third of the way. And then on the underside, I hollowed it out a little bit so that as I drill down, it'll eat the board up a little bit. As I drill down, uh, there's more places for the dust to collect. Yeah, that's why you want a thicker board because it will drill down through this fireboard. No, well, you don't want it too thick. You want it about as thick as your thumb. So anyway, I usually put the notch on the side toward me, but I'm going to face it toward the camera this time. I'm going to bring you up close, and uh, we're going to work this thing into an ember. Yeah, I got a piece of birch bark under there to collect the dust. It should work real well. Yeah. We're rolling. Okay, I have maybe breathed a little bit heavy, but I have not worked up a sweat. I'm going to make sure I get some dandelion greens here and some in reserve in case in case it starts to lock up on me. Okay, here we go. Low and slow coal. I'm just going to warm it back up here. <clears throat> yeah, it's often said that you should be able to talk while you do this. This is not a physical thing. All the fails I've had in the past were because I was trying to get too physical with it. I'm not putting much pressure on it. 
not going too fast. One thing I will say, at the end I go really fast for about 30 seconds just to get it really smoking hot. And when I do that, I emphasize power on the pull stroke. So on the push stroke, you don't have a lot of leverage. So uh, on the pull stroke, you can really reef on it, really get it smoking. So we got good smoke now. And we're starting to build up a nice pile of dust. I'm just gonna keep going here. I'm not sweating and I'm not breathing hard, too hard yet. The color of the dust is like dark roasted coffee. That's a good sign. This thing's starting to get harder to turn and I'm gonna go for it now. I'm gonna start speeding up a little bit. Emphasize the pull stroke. I think that will do it. <coughs> Smoking me out. All right. We got smoke. It's looking pretty good. All right. Okay, I'm breathing a little bit hard. Not much though, for an old guy. Okay, so now, friends, it's the time to chill. Whew, okay, I went up for it pretty good there toward the end because it's so cold out, I was a little paranoid that we might not. Oh, but this thing's already glowing big time. I might have overdone it. So we're gonna give it a little bit of dust off of our fireboard. And uh, really no rush, we can just let this sit here and smoke for a little bit. That coal will just get bigger. I'm gonna see if I can bring you in close and so you can have a view of that and see how it's glowing already. Yeah, it's a beauty. You can take your knife and you can feed it a little bit. I don't want to mess with it too much. Very delicately move a little dust around. If you get to the point where you're ever producing light brown dust, uh, you're pushing too hard and your set isn't dry, it's not warm. So anyway, I'm going to back off a little bit here and, and uh, let it do its thing. And we'll stick it in our tinder bundle, see if we can blow it into flames. So, I'm going to move this fat wood to the side. I have some nice fine grass where I'm going to drop my ember. Oh, what a beauty. I'm just going to carefully drop that right in there. And this birch bark's kind of, I don't know if it's a good idea or not. I might just save that for kindling and give this a little pinch I'm going to move closer to the fire pit here Don't want to blow too hard right now because it's that dust you want to really get it. You don't want to blow it through. I like to blow from the bottom. Also drying out the uh, tinder bundle a little bit.
it go. You can hear it when it wants to go. You give it a little extra breath. Yeah. That's a great feeling. Well, hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it helps some of you out there that might be uh, getting up there in age and uh, maybe even some of the younger guys that haven't got quite figured out yet. I'm going to grab my coffee and enjoy a fire. Until next time, God bless and happy trails, friends. This is Over and Out from the West Fork Woodsman. Well, friends, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Feel welcome to subscribe to the West Fork channel. And uh, feel welcome to leave comments. It's always nice to have a good discussion. And uh, give me a like. It really helps out the channel. And even if uh, you want to help out further, share the video with a friend who might be interested in this type of content. Until next time, God bless you. Take care, stay safe.